The pandeiro is a hugely popular instrument in Brazil and is used in numerous types of Brazilian music, including capoeira. It has been described as the unofficial instrument of the country. I was uh, going to trace a bit of the history of uh, the instrument until I found this image. It dates back to about the 6th century BC. And that stopped me right in my tracks. Uh, some form or another of uh, this type of hand drum has been with us for a while. There are tons of historical depictions of the pandero um, or pandero-like instruments. Besides the pandero, there are still many, many living hand drums in the world today. Uh, I just wanted to take a look at a couple of them and then uh, flash forward to the present. Uh, get started uh, close to home. Uh, the uh, indigenous people of North America, of course, have many, many uh, types of hand drums. Uh, there is uh, the Portuguese adufe. It was introduced by traders from the Middle East. It's a skin stretched over a square frame uh, and the jingles are on the inside. Quite an, uh, quite an unusual instrument. Uh, but it was also at one time called the Pandero. Uh, how and when the two names got switched around, I have no idea. There is the, the Irish uh, Baudran, the Egyptian Rick, the West African Saqqara, Middle Eastern Tar. There's the tambourine, of course. Then there is the Brazilian tamborim. Uh, it has a head, but no jingles. It's played with a stick and it's much smaller. It's usually only about uh, 15 and a quarter uh, or centimeters or six inches in, uh, in diameter. It is also, as you can tell from this illustration, the most fun instrument in the world to play. <laughs> And now what better way to, uh, to leave this rich tapestry of world music than with the absurd. The lace tambourine. DIY instructions are available on the internet. So um, yeah, something to think about for your next special occasion. The pandero, as we know it, is a handheld frame drum. Uh, the round wooden or metal frame usually ranges from 21 centimeters or 8 inches to about 30 centimeters or 12 inches in diameter. Uh, the tunable covering or head is made of animal hide or plastic. Uh, the type of material and the thickness of it determines the sound of the instrument. The head is held to the frame with a metal rim. Traditionally, uh, skin heads uh, had uh, flat rims and plastic heads had round rims. Um, this isn't necessarily the rule anymore. The rim is held to the instrument and the instrument is also tuned using uh, tuning lugs or tuning hooks. Um, how they are attached to the instrument varies from maker to maker. Most uh, instruments will come with a, um, with a tuning key. The Pandero has one row of six metal discs called platinellas. Uh, there will be a gap somewhere between them on the frame, which is where we're going to hold the instrument. They are cup shaped so that they naturally mute themselves. They can be fitted loosely or snugly, depending on how much sound we want them to make. Inside of the platanellas is an abafado, which in English means damper. Uh, it is another smaller but flat metal disc. 
The platanellas uh, can be made of brass or steel or copper, uh, and that adds yet another component of um, how the instrument will sound. The music that you're going to play is often what determines uh, the type of pandero that you're going to buy. Uh, if you're playing short on music and you want a really soft, sexy sounding instrument, then you're going to go for a, a wood frame with a natural head, a thinner skin, uh, and hand hammered brass uh, platanellas. Um, if you're going to a big noisy capoeira hora, uh, then you want to go for that 30 centimeter metal frame with a, a nylon head and really, really loosely fitted platinellas so that they jingle and make a lot of sound.